Hello and welcome to the third tutorial in a, the series of tutorials interfacing with Sandbox. Um, this time we're going to learn how to expose a custom parameter for our colorize uh, feature. Um, we're coming off of uh, the last tutorial where we learned how to add a texture slot. So the process is actually fairly similar for a uh, feature, although there is something extra we need to keep in mind, just like the texture slot with the, uh, the registers. Um, we are going to start off by defining our, once again, we're going to say if uh, colorize, then we're going to put on our end if pragma, and uh, we are going to copy and paste some code from here. I'm just going to tab this off. Alright, so we're going to rename our float, and by the way, the float variable here, uh, since this is going to be a simple blend, it doesn't need to be a float, it can be just a half. Um, and we're going to name this variable uh, intensity. So this will be color colorize intensity. This is just the format of the variables I use. I, I actually don't use the same formatting as, as uh, they do in the default CryFX. To me, this is a little bit easier to um, uh, see at a glance, but uh, you may disagree. So the next thing that uh, we're going to look at is the regpm param. Uh, just like the texture slot, this is a, something that is um, uh, required to be unique and or correct in order for this parameter to even like work at all. Uh, we shouldn't need to touch anything else really here except for the UI min and max. Uh, but first let's look at the uh, regparam. So these are defined actually in a uh, fx uh, constant def file. So let's switch this to C++. Alright, so what we're looking for is the regpm param. So uh, as you can see there is seven available. Each has uh, is a uh, half four or a float four, I can't remember which. Uh, and each one of these is a buffer that is registered uh, to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to say rename this to eight and change this uh, constant buffer to 50. We're going to save this. We're going to go back to our ilum.cfx file and we are going to change this to 8, which is the one we just created, and we're going to change this to x, which is uh, the first uh, uh, sub-variable of this variable, the first element of the variable. Uh, there's uh, four elements in the variable, as I said, it's a half, three, a half four or float four, I, c I can't remember. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this, and we're going to name this colorize intensity. And we're going to change the UI max to 1 and the minimum to just going to leave it at 0. The UI step is fine. Uh, here is the default amount. So when you check the checkbox in a new shader, what is the default amount that you want to show up? So I'm actually going to use 0 0.5, kind of like an in-between um, va value there. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to double check and make sure the FX constant def is saved. Um, now I'm going to go to my common Z pass. And uh, I'm just going to check, and as you can see, we're still, as before, have the get custom text from our custom texture slot we defined in the previous tutorial. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save, and I'm just going to restart the editor. And as always, I just need to remind uh, you that you need to have the uh, remote shader compiler open if you have the environment set up the way I set it up in the previous tutorial uh, series. Okay, so let's open up our example.level. Let me check. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's not compiling, so let's go to the console. Let's clear it, and I'm going to reload shaders. Our reload shaders. It didn't get anything. So let's go to our compiler. Let's hit enter. Okay, it's updating the shader list. 
There we go. Okay, it just needed to update the shader list. Uh, if that happens, by the way, you need to go to your remote shader compiler and you can just hit enter and uh, if it got stuck it will continue its work. Which is one nice thing about using the remote compiler. If, it's, if something goes wrong you can interrupt it and uh, restart it. Okay, so as before, um, I'm going to check the colorize. We have our colorized text here. Uh, I'm just going to pick uh, some random texture. Uh, let's see, uh, just to moss diffuse will be fine for now. Uh, as you can see, the colorized text is correctly already applying t uh, to the diffuse um, pass. So already we have our first application of, so of our of our um, colorized text. Uh, well now we're going to have to go to the um, uh, here to our shader code in the common Z pass uh, in the output albedo and reflectance reflectance section of the pixel shader of common Z pass. Uh, and we're going to basically rewrite this line. Uh, we're going to instead assign the texture that we just got. We're going to assign this on a separate line to a new variable, which is a half three. We're going to say um, this is our colorized text equal to get custom text color2 in dot base tc dot xy. Uh, now we are going to add a lerp. So this is a linear interpolation. We're going to linear, linearly interpolate our colorized text with our C albedo and use our uh, parameter that we defined. Uh, it's, you can see uh, it's here, colorize intensity in the material editor interface. Uh, we are going to add that parameter to it. So I believe it's uh, colorize underscore um, intensity. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to go to the console and I'll just hit up on my keyboard and reload. Alright, we have an error. C albedo is an unexpected token. Okay, let's look back and see what I messed Oh, I forgot the semicolon. See, that that's one of those things, actually, it's a really important that I made that mistake here. Uh, so I can show you that the syntax error isn't actually what the real problem is. You'll notice that uh, it says C albedo has an unexpected token, but that's because I was missing the semicolon on the end of this line. Um, it didn't actually say I was missing the semicolon of this line, it said that C albedo was broken. So often when this kind of thing happens, uh, look above the p where it tells you the problem is in the compiler error. Okay, so I'm going to save this fix and I'm just going to reload the shaders again. Okay, so uh, now as you can see, uh, the overlay strength, although I have it inverted, um, is working as we would expect. So uh, that's how you incorporate your first parameter and how you hook it up to uh, part of your shader code. The next set of tutorials is going to be the most exciting. That is uh, creating a blend feature. So I'm going to create the slope blend feature from uh, one of my shaders. Uh, it's a pretty complex effect. Um, so I'm going to do my best to simplify it and only give the specific uh, breakdowns that I need so I don't create too confusing of a tutorial right off the bat. Alright, so I will see you in the next tutorial.